Hey folks, Dan Furrier here with your closing bell or your semi-closing bell for October uh, 4th, 2024. So it is a complete bloodbath when it comes to mortgage rates. Mortgage rates uh, almost across the board were up a quarter percent. So then you ask yourself why. You, you, the first thing that comes out is, Dan, there was a great jobs number. We remember we were hoping that the jobs numbers were okay because if, if they were negative, it would signal we're in a recession and things are really bad. So when the jobs numbers are really good, it flip-flops it the other way. So it's 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 representing that the economy is pretty good. So that what's freaking out the markets now on this side of the equation is saying, well, can the Federal Reserve actually take off, yes, off any rate cuts? So that's what's on the table right now. And I'm going to show you that based on the CME FedWatch tool. But let's get over the numbers real quick. We have the uh, gross domestic production. Quarter one of this year was at 1.6%. Q2 was at 3%. And Q3, I think, is coming in about 25 to 3% as well. So uh, GDP, we're good. We're in the positives because a recession is two negative quarters of this. So the GDP is okay right now. Next thing is let's look at the current inflation rate. We were at 9. Remember, we were at 9 not too long ago, and the Federal Reserve kept raising rates and raising rates to bring this thing down. We're at 2.5%. And with housing inflation, Federal Chairman Powell said uh, that's coming down tick by tick by tick, and we'll be hitting our 2% inflation figure uh, anytime soon. And then this is what happened. Everybody was expecting the, the jobs report to be, I'll say, stagnant or maybe possibly bad. So here's where the uh, basically the unemployment rate has gone. So let's get over to this. It ticked up to 4.3 just not too long ago in July. Then it ticked down 4.2 in August, and now it is 4.1 in September. So now the jobs market is actually getting a little bit better. So we have to remember the Fed's two mandates. They had two mandates. One was to cure inflation, which it looks like they've done a pretty good job so far there. And the other one is jobs making sure jobs are, are there. And the unemployment rate actually has ticked down over the last two readings. So now what the markets are expecting is, well, are the Federal Reserve going to cut 50, cut 25? Well, now the markets are saying, are they even going to cut at all? Do they have to? So we have former Fed official from the Cleveland uh, Reserve right through here, and we're going to get her take on this. And then I'm going to go back to the CME Fed Watch tool. There's a little bit of a change there, folks, that I want to go over with you. So let's check this out, and then we'll be back to the CME Fed Watch tool to see what it is telling us. So let's get to it. All right, joining us right now is former Cleveland Fed President Loretta Mester. She is now an adjunct professor of finance at the University of Pennsylvania. Another professor. Where is she? Wharton. Virginia's Wharton School, also a CNBC contributor. They're all Loretta, professors. Thank you. You are the person we need to speak to most at this point. Please tell us, based on your read of these numbers, whether the Fed should cut rates again. Well, it was a great conversation, I have to say. I enjoyed it as well. Look, the Fed has a dual mandate, price stability and maximum employment. Um, the Fed's started this phase of bringing policy rates down towards neutral. Yes, you're right. We don't know exactly where neutral is. But we, we do have signs that the economy is moderating. So the employment report today was a strong report, which is good for the Fed. The Fed has to balance both things. The concern over the past couple of months was maybe labor markets were cooling off a bit too much, not just moderating, but weakening. I think this report, plus the revisions from the two prior months, really show that, no, the economy is doing quite well on the employment front um, and inflation is coming down. And so in that environment, the Fed has to be forward looking and you don't want to keep rates at the current level, given where inflation has come down from and where it's going in, ter in terms of the forecast. Yeah, there are risks on the upside to inflation, and you pointed out some of them, including oil prices, given the conflict in the Middle East, which may be escalating, and that's something to keep an eye on. But you have to sort of make your best policy looking at where you think things are going, and maybe you'll have to course correct in the future if things turn out differently than where you're projecting. But right now, it makes sense for the Fed to keep looking at the data it gets up until that next meeting, and then move rates down as it said it was going to do at the last meeting It's starting a new phase to bring them towards neutral. We don't know exactly where neutral is. We don't know when the stopping point will be. So what they're talking about the neutral rate, basically what it is is they want the federal funds rate 
to be equal to what the inflation rate is. Okay, so we have the federal funds rate now at, what is it, 475 to 5 or 5 to 5 and a quarter? No, it's 5 to 5 and a quarter. So 475 to 5 right now. Okay, so that's what it's at. We have inflation right now, and you guys might you know disagree with me on that one, but this one, but it's telling us right through here uh, that it is two and a half. So let's go. I'm going to cheat now. Well, let's just, let's finish with her interview here, and then I'm going to go to the CME Fed Watch tool and explain to you guys what the neutral rate is that they're they're talking about. But with the moderation going on in the economy that we've seen so far, which is expected to continue, and where inflation is expected to to go down, it makes sense to be bringing rates down at a moderate pace. I think this report would not necessarily support doing another 50. But it does, it is consistent with moving rates down another 25. And then, you know, Loretta, maybe they'll pause for a meeting or two. Yeah, that, that would be my guess, Loretta. If, if, if you're looking at inflation, not necessarily completely where you want it, but coming down significantly when you're looking at the jobs market being stronger than you even anticipated last month, because we not only had stronger than expected numbers for the most recent read, they, they raised, um, they, they revised the numbers upward for the month before. Wouldn't the prudent thing to be... Uh, to do be look around and wait and see, especially when you just came off 50 basis points when that was the, the most anybody had been anticipating. I mean, you could do that. And again, they're going to have that meeting, the, the discussion around the table. I, I think it would be actually a signal of sort of stop and go policy, which I don't think would be very helpful. Look, they started in this phase. There's a lot of evidence that suggests that, that things are moderating. I mean, not every report that's come out has shown that everybody's hiring, right? If you look at sort of the ISM surveys and the businesses that they talk to in that survey, a lot of them said, hey, we're, we're being you know, prudent about our labor force now. Um, we can hire people. If you look at the quits rate, people aren't quitting their jobs as, as quickly as they were before because they feel that it's harder to get a job if they were to quit to move into a new job. So there's moderation going on in the labor market, which we want. We want sustainable labor markets. We don't want things to be overly tight, and we don't certainly don't want people to be losing their jobs because the Fed is too tight. So that's kind of where the Fed has to look at. It's basically balance, balancing risk. And, you know, in the past, you could say they had the luxury of only having to worry about inflation. That wasn't really a luxury, but you know what I mean? They had to focus on inflation. Sure. Now they have to look at both parts. And that's what makes this more difficult, right? The decisions are going to be difficult yep. going forward. But they're, they've always been keeping both parts of the mandate in, 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 uh, in view. It's kind of like yep. if you have a panorama shot, right, you may focus sure. on one part of the mountain, but you still want to have the valley in the, in the panoramic shot. They always sure. have both parts of the mandate in mind. Okay, well, 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 that was the end of it. So that's what she was talking about. So I, I'm going to have to agree with her. I, I wasn't on the, the bandwagon of the 50 basis points cuts because we don't know what all this is going to bring. And a lot of things, too, is we have a lot of immigration, legal and uh, not legal, and they're probably getting jobs and finding places to live. Okay, so that's a, another piece of the puzzle that a lot of people forget. Housing, you might say, well, there, we don't have a housing shortage. Well, do we have maybe five, seven, 10 million people here or more people here that we don't know? So those are people allocated that where are they living? So the, the people are taking up spots. They're probably most likely taking up jobs. So a lot of it might be under the radar. But the, the, the nice thing about all this is it's basically a Goldilocks scenario right now other than this right here. This is the bond market. So if you're new to the channel, we follow on a daily basis is right through here. This is actually the bond that controls your mortgage rate. It's called an MBS. It's a mortgage-backed security. So it's a mortgage bond that trades on Wall Street. Let's go to today's numbers. And so here's what we have. What you need to follow when you're following this bond is if the price of the bond goes down, rates are going up. And if the price of the bond goes up, rates are coming down. Here's where the opening bell was right through here. Opening bell came in and poof, it just plummeted. And it came back a little bit where we're still down 37 ticks. So that means, well, the rates went up a quarter percent today. So that's not good news there, but the equity markets, they're killing it. So you can see right through here, mortgage rates spike on this better news than expected. And the, the, it's all green across the top, folks. Uh, but the VIX and the VIX is down a little bit. So that means the markets are calming down a little bit. Let's see what cryptocurrencies are doing. They're uh, back up. And oil, oil is going to be up because of the unsecure in, in uh, the, all the events in the Middle 
least. Okay, so I took a little bit of a deep dive this morning. Uh, let's look at our portfolio because this is what we're going to do on Fridays. So the reason why I did this is I have so many people down below that they comment. They're like, Dan, I have no money. I, I don't have this. I don't. So I want to help change your thinking or at least change your maybe your future. Okay, so let's say you got a job and you, you're, you're just making ends meet. Wonder if we could save 10, 20, maybe 25, $50 a month or maybe a paycheck and put it somewhere. It, it will treat it like a bill. Okay, so here's some investments. And, and the reason why I picked these is just to help educate you guys on different things that you can invest in. Okay, a, a recent addition we did to this was we added into the uh, China, Chinese uh, top 500 companies. Okay, the, the, the US has this platform and it's called the Spider or the, the S&P 500. But you can actually buy into that as an investment through a Spider fund. It's called SPY. Another way to do that is you can look at VU, V-O-O. It's a cheaper version. But let's just break down these. But here's the returns. These returns are basically since I think it was about a month ago that we did this. So just think these are three to four week returns because the markets are returning uncommonly good returns right now. So let's break it down. The first to the top right through here, we have the Chinese um, spider fund. And we just it bought into this fund when the China came out and they said that they're going to put push out a huge stimulus package. Okay, so we knew that that money was going to be spent on infrastructure, other things. So we're like, okay, this might be a good investment opportunity. So right now you're seeing that that uh, call is up 10% just within the last 30 days. So good call there. This is a trade. I'm just looking to jump in and jump out and make a little bit of money here on that trade because I'm not a huge fan of China and I don't want to invest there, but got to make money where you can. So that's that part of it. So that would be what I would consider a trade. What I'm looking at help to help you guys is, is maybe do some trading, but you have to do some long-term investments as well. So where do you put that money to work for you while you're waiting for maybe the housing crash or maybe rates to get a little bit better or so forth? Well, these are some just ideas for you. What I'm telling you to do with these things is basically nothing other than research. Don't want you to buy them. Don't want you to do anything. Just want to explain to you how this stuff works. Okay, XLF. And I went through it briefly this morning, but I want to do it a little more in depth today. So I like the financials because the spreads and long-term rates and short-term rates are going to make banks more profitable. I know that because I'm in the banking industry. Okay. So I want to invest in financials, but I just don't know what to invest in. Do I invest in my bank? Uh, do I invest in Citibank? Wells Fargo? What do I invest in? Well, you know, there's really, I, I don't want to do my due diligence that deep. I don't want to have to dig into the books and everything else. So I wonder if I could just buy a platform or, or one stock that gives me uh, positions in all of them. Well, this is the XLF. So let's dive into the XLF. This is a, probably a perfect learning tool. Let's go down through here. And this tells us what are its top holdings. So here's the top holdings that it has. So it owns 13% uh, of its portfolios in Berkshire Hathaway. 9% is in JP Morgan, and you can go all the way through here with these companies. So you might be like, well, that's the S&P Global, Wells Fargo. I like Wells Fargo. I'd like to invest in that. Why not invest in this? So then what happens is if, if Wells Fargo, for, for example, has a bad quarter or a bad something happen and gets tanked, you're not taking, you're not getting completely clobbered because you're spreading your money over all these things. And there's more, there's more holdings down through here. Okay. Then you go down through here. Here's some of the other things that we're going to look at. We're going to go down through, let me just check. I, my, my glasses are kind of a little bit hard to read. Okay. It pays a dividend yield also. So the dividend yield, you're getting a 1.47 yield on this thing. Think of a bank account that you're getting a 1.47 return. If I get, said two, three years ago, I'll give you a 1.47 return on your, your uh, bank account, you'd be like, I'll take it all day long. Remember when bank accounts had like the interest rates was 0.01 or something like that? Just, just nothing. Well, this one will actually even give you a yield. And then it gives you a whole bunch of information. You can dive into the historic data. You can dive into charts. Like, let's look at the charts to see how this thing's been doing over time right through here. Here, let's go to a maybe a one year chart year to date. Let's go through that. What is it? And that well, that's where we're at. So we started the year down here and we ended up here. A nice run. So that that's basically um, that portion of it. That's the one I want to just go over with you right now. Berkshire Hathaway, the BRKB. You probably saw that in the XLF's uh, uh, portfolio. So I wouldn't invest in. Berkshire Hathaway just directly. You might want to buy into the XLF, but I would do my research in both of these and then choose which maybe one fits your fancy the best. This one I'll probably eliminate, but I'm just showing you how Bitcoin just goes way up or way down. So I'm, I'm invested in Bitcoin. I buy a little bit every couple weeks. 
uh, just a little bit and then accumulate over time because there are huge swings. Uh, you can see right through here. It's up 13% over the last, I'm going to say 30 days. This was up like 20 or 30% a couple of days ago, and then it took a nosedive. So it's hugely volatile. And then we were talking about the spider. The spider fund, if you jump into that, I'll show you its holdings. You can look at this to see what this one is. And it might even have some duplicate holdings of what the, the other ones have, but at least you're seeing through here, what are you getting if you buy into this platform? Well, you're getting pieces of app. Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Amazon. It looks like it's pretty tech heavy. Uh, these are, they're called the Magnific, Magnificent, Magnificent 7 right now, and it's mostly kind of right through here. So you're getting a, an accumulation of that along with Tesla and, and much, much more. So this is the one I, I like. So I, I actually invest in the VU, V-O-O. -O. Check that one out as well. But just giving you some ideas. And we, we, one day we need to just do a live event and take a deep dive into the financials and things like that. I'll see if, if you're an, 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 a stock advisor out there, financial planner, and you'd like to talk about this, you know really the in-depths of a lot of this, reach out to me. I'd love to have you on, on a video where we can talk about these things and make it make sense to the common person, okay? Because they don't teach this stuff in high school and college. Uh, so that's that. their report for the week. So uh, folks, I did get some news on my brother-in-law and it looks actually worse than it is. Um, he's got stage four uh, cancer and it's basically all over his body. Uh, so I might be in and out here and there. So if I don't do a video one day, just have my family and I in your prayers. That's all I ask of you, uh, just to help us at these times, because uh, it's just, we just lost my mother-in-law. Now it's my brother-in-law, and things are just it's it's a little bit uh, a little bit rough right now at the Frio household. So your prayers would be welcome, and that's all I ask of you today. You don't have to subscribe or anything. If you could just keep me in your prayers, I'd greatly be pray, uh, grateful for that. So thanks so much, folks. My name is Dan Frio. I'm actually a loan officer licensed in all 50 states as well as Puerto Rico. So if you like my content, you think I know what I'm doing, and you'd like to work with me, I'd love to work with you as well. Uh, we work on refinances. Most people are purchasing homes right now, but we went from an, basically an 80, 20, 80% 80 of our uh, transactions were purchases to 20% refis to about maybe about 60, 40 right now. A lot of people are trying to take advantage of the rates while they were low. They took a little bit of a pop today, but uh, they'll, they'll be meandering down over time. Uh, and we saw the CME FedWatch tool. That's the one thing I forgot. So hopefully you stayed with me during this time. Let's go over to the CME FedWatch tool and see what's happened. Right through here, it is, it, they brought back, look, they brought it back. The 475, 5%, that's where the federal funds rate is right now. They brought it back and there is, there is a chance that the Federal Reserve might not do anything at the next meeting. But I think that chance is out there because they don't want to come in and, and d drop 50 and then don't do anything. But they just might. So let's monitor this market to pick a, a great point for you guys to either refinance or maybe uh, check in and lock in that rate to buy that first house. So if that's the case, just check out my website, theRateUpdate.com. Here's all the information you need to know. If you're looking to buy that first house, check out our grant finder right there. It's going to give you grants throughout the whole country as well as the Chicagoland area. And if you're looking to refinance, we actually made a nice tool for you guys. It's going to be right over here. So you'll scroll down. We're trying to figure out a place for it, but we call it the rate watch tool. And if you're looking to pick your rate on where you want to refinance, so let's say your rate right now is seven and a half. And you're like, Hey Dan, when it's six and a quarter or six or five, nine, nine, I want to know because I want to refinance. We got the tool right now for you. So you can put, click this start button, add in all your information. And when the number hits, the percentages hit that rate, I'm going to be on the horn with you to get you on the phone, to go over the rates the payments, and the fees. So thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a fantastic weekend, and I'll see you next week, uh, God willing, and Monday to let you know how all this mess is going again for another day. So thanks for watching, folks. Have a fantastic weekend. See you here next time. Bye-bye.